Eczema is mostly treated in primary care and patients and parents have to take great responsibility for looking after the skin. It requires daily or more application of moisturisers and sometimes steroid creams, which is easy to say but harder to actually do. Treatment failure is common because parents aren't always given sufficient information about how to look after the skin and how to use the preparations and this sometimes leads to treatment escalation. Primary care consultations can be unsatisfactory for parents, children and for GPs. If someone had asked me before I had a child what eczema was, I would have said it's a bit of flaky skin, you put some cream on it and it goes away, how very wrong I was. Living with eczema is far more than that. As a family, it impacts us on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of leaving enough time to get up in the morning, making sure that when you're putting creams on, you're not wearing something that's dark coloured because you can guarantee you're going to get a handprint of something on you, to bath times where they see on television children with bubble baths are advertised and bath bombs and you've got to explain why they can't have them. Are you going to just use an ointment on that evening? Which one do you choose? Actually then when your child doesn't want any of that on, trying to then negotiate and trying to help them to self-apply, teaching them to self-apply their creams because that's a skill that they'll need going forwards. Self-management requires teamwork. That team is the family, the child and the healthcare professionals working together to achieve their eczema goals. These goals may be to find a cause or a cure, which we have to unpick and discuss as part of the journey. To sleep, to stop scratching, to have friends and to wear nice clothes. And there are many, many more expectations and goals that parents and children with eczema want to achieve. All this discussion and information needs to be supported with written care plans and information which is age appropriate um, for the family and the child. There are nice guidelines on how to treat childhood eczema, but we know that they're not always followed in day-to-day -day practice. So in this study, I wanted to look and find new ways to mobilise knowledge to encourage people to follow the guidelines. Knowledge mobilisation is all about sharing knowledge across different communities to catalyse changes in practice. There are multiple methods of sharing knowledge, um, some of them more complex than others, uh, but one intuitively made sense to me as a nurse, and that was the idea of mind lines. As practitioners, we put together our ideas about practice and our evidence from lots of different sources, and we learn from each other and from patients. To me, if practitioners, nurses, doctors have mind lines, it seems reasonable to think that lay people, patients, parents have their own version of the same thing. Early on in my study, I set out to find out how lay and practitioner eczema mind lines are actually formed. I learned a lot from that process. So lay eczema mind lines are made up of a lot of trial and error, a lot of information from family, friends and wider social circles. A certain amount of information from Dr Google and people were knew that that wasn't necessarily good quality information so they didn't necessarily act on it. And a certain amount from practitioners, sometimes helpful, sometimes not so. Many parents told me about getting conflicting information from different practitioners which added up to a great deal of confusion for them and sometimes they just stopped going to see doctors because they just didn't understand what they were meant to be doing. Practitioners told me that eczema is generally quite a low priority condition for them. They see it as quite simple to treat just steroids and emollients and prescribing choices are limited by local formularies so they had limited incentive to change their thinking about it. I wanted to move existing knowledge about eczema care into practice and to do this I put together a co-creation group so I had a group of 25 people, parents of children with eczema children themselves, older children, practitioners, GPs, community pharmacists, dermatology specialist nurses. We all spent three days together thinking about how we could best move 
messages about eczema consistently to practitioners and to lay people? I think that research alongside lay patients allows for that greater depth of understanding that may not come out of a shorter consultation, um, which tends to focus more on the presenting symptoms, physical pain such as the itching, and the treatment and management of it, rather than some of the deeper kind of greater struggles that people may be undergoing and living with. And so I think that it will allow for research to become much more effective. For lay people, they wanted trustworthy knowledge, they wanted to be sure of where it was coming from and that it was valid. Practitioners wanted no faff, easy to access information. Over the three days, we distilled five key messages that the group agreed if they were shared across practitioner, lay, wider community boundaries would support um, better eczema care. Eczema is more than just dry skin. Eczema doesn't just go away. Moisturisers are for every day. Steroid creams are okay when you need them and you know your child's eczema best. So then we worked on different ways to get these messages out and we wanted to spread them as widely as possible. Having used all sorts of ways to share the five key messages in a local area, I decided that I wanted to share them more widely. And at that point, I was introduced to Symphonia Viva and we've worked together to share the five same five key messages much more widely using really creative methods. So first of all, we wrote, wrote and illustrated a book called The Dragon in My Skin. And then we've worked w with children and they've written a song based on the book and they've sung it and they've read the book to us and the song is being orchestrated and we're also making an animation of the book. When I received this commission, there were three strands to the brief. One was to integrate the five key messages. One was to create a story um, rather than a non-fiction exploration of those five key messages. And the other was to make a story which would appeal to children who have been impacted by eczema, but also would appeal to children who have not and increase their understanding of the condition. So my challenge was to find a creative and imaginative way to write a story which included these really important and quite specific messages. The thing that came through most clearly from all five messages was that everybody's condition is individual and unique and the way to feel like you can accept and live with this condition is to practice really good self-care so to really know your own condition and know how to look after it and that to me felt that everybody could relate to that because we all have things which we need to know very well and we need to look after so i thought about what it would be in an imaginative way to have something which lives inside us, can grow out of control, that of course we want to fight, but that ultimately we have to take care of. And that's where the idea of the dragon came from. Um, and I've been really delighted how the story came out and really delighted from the reactions of our first young readers. To deliver the project, we brought together a lot of different Symphonia Viva artists. So we've got the orchestra who've been recording the songs, we've got Raf who's been um, orchestrating, and Abimaro who's writing the songs with the young people, and Hazel who's done the story. And then we're going to add in Abby and Darius who've made the animation. So what we're going to end up with is this wonderful piece where the orchestra is playing the underscore, accompanying the young people, and those messages are going to come through really clearly in the children's voice. I have a dragon who lives in my skin Like a bee ready to sting we had um, an incredible book that was written that Hazel Gould wrote with some young people. And so what we did is we revisited those pages and we revisited the, the experiences and the story. And we looked at those stories and we asked some questions about, about those pages. So things like, um, what does it feel like to have a dragon in your skin? 
um, and we looked at the character of the dragon and, and we put those feelings and those experiences into lyrics. And then from those lyrics, we thought about how could we put this into song? How could we put this into melody? So with those feelings, how does it sound if, if, things are, if you're feeling itchy? What does that sound like compared to if you feel nice and cool and calm after cream has gone on your body? What does that sound like? And so we, we just w worked through this incredible story um, and used it as, as a way to access our feelings and our emotions and um, to be able to inspire the songs. Me feel so so what we're doing today, which is really exciting, is that we're piecing together all of those songs and the lyrics and story that we um, were able to write with these young people and we are recording it here today. As well as us recording it and we're having an amazing ensemble and singing, we're also getting the young people to remotely send in their recordings of the narration of the book and also the songs. So what we'll have at the end is an incredible super recording of all of these parts together in one incredible animation. Having created all these resources, we looked at the best way of sharing them widely and are working with colleagues in, in schools across the West Midlands, primary schools, key stage one age children, and we're developing a whole suite of resources for teachers to use to share the dragon in my skin and the key messages that go with that. The Dragon in My Skin book and teacher resources will help all children to understand about eczema and how difficult it can be to live with on a day to day basis, not only from a physical perspective, but emotionally too. The teacher resources will help children to think positively about to manage not only the, the eczema, but also how to explore and understand their feelings and emotions. We want teachers to feel confident about having these conversations with their pupils and the activities have been designed to explore these conversations in a rich and creative way. And we want the children to enjoy and to engage and have fun with the activities, whilst not losing sight of just how important that key message is around children feeling safe and happy at school, even when their dragon is not so happy. Eczema is just all consuming as a parent. And it, it's, it's, it's lovely to see it written in a way that is understandable for other children, for other children to understand what it's like to live with this. I've really enjoyed leading this project and finding completely new ways to move health messages across patient, practitioner, community boundaries. Although the work now is applied to eczema, in the future I'm sure we'll be able to use it with other long-term conditions to help people to look after themselves better.